This is exercise 7-9. We're going to add calculated values and tags and schedules. So we're going to create a schedule using a calculated value. We're going to create a room tag using a calculated value, and we're going to modify a room size. To start, we're on the ground floor admin wing floor plan. We're going to click on a tag, right click, and say edit family. Okay, so this will bring up the room tag family. All right, now up here, we're gonna click on create and then label, and then we're just gonna click in the space, and then the edit label dialog box pops up. And we want to select add a calculated parameter, which is this little tool right here. The name is going to be max occupancy. And maximum occupancy is a calculation that's done through IBC, the International Building Code. So it tells you how many people can be in a room at one time, and that's for fire safety. So say there was an emergency, you don't want people trampling each other or not being able to get out of a space. So it's saying how many people can be in that space. And you'll see that in things like movie theaters, or if you go into like large, um, like our cafeteria in school, or if you go into a coffee shop, they should have that plaque posted outside or inside of the building, right inside the door. All right, um, anyway, we have maximum occupancy and we're gonna set the type of parameter as number. So it's on number. And for the formula down here, we want to type round down, um, parenthesis, parenthesis, uh, area divided by one square foot divided by 0 0.3. And again, this information is coming from the code. So 0.3 is the occupancy factor allowed for this type of space. And I'm just gonna check to make sure I wrote that correctly. And then I'm gonna say, okay. In the prefix column over here, we want to type max, occupancy equals, oops, equals, there we go. If you want to see that a little better, you can always expand these columns out. So max, max occupancy equals, and now we're going to press OK. And we're going to position the label below the area. So we kind of want it to be down here. Oh, sorry about that. So it's in here. Everything's kind of on top of each other. See, you can kind of, there it is, max occupancy. Position that below the area. Now we want to save the family as room tag with occupancy. So we have to do file, save as, and we're saving it as a family, remember, not a project. So a family. Make sure it's you're saving it to your Revit exercises folder and we're calling it room tag with occupancy and it's got to be dot rfa so that means a revit family when you see dot rfa okay so we're going to say save oh well i already have one so actually i'm going to say no and i'm going to I have one because I think I have the instructor file, so I'm just going to say uh, 2 so I can have it. I'm going to hit save. Okay, and now we're going to load into project. And we want to select one of the room tags in the view. So we're going to select one of the room tags in the view. Whoop. Actually, didn't mean to place that because I put two room tags. We're going to right click and we're going to select all instances visible in view. And then over here in the properties box, we want to do room tag with occupancy. And we want to select room tag with area. Right. And you'll see that the room tag updated. So now it's saying that, well, that's a lot of people that can be in this large office space. That doesn't seem right, does it? I don't think that's right. <laughs> we must use a weird factor, but I guess we're not looking at that right now. We're just looking at how to put these tags in, so I'll, I'll let it go. All right, next step is we want to activate the view ribbon 
and we want to select schedules. So again, if you don't know where there are, those are, you kind of just hover around until you find schedules. And we want a schedule, schedule quantities. And we're going to highlight rooms. So we're going to come over here and highlight rooms. And everything's in alphabetical order. And we want the name to be room occupancy. And we're going to say, okay. And now for the fields that we want, we would like to have the number. And again, everything is in alphabetical order. So adding number, adding name, and then adding area. Now we're going to select add calculated value right here. We're going to name this max room capacity. And make sure you spell it right. That would be nice. Okay. And we're going to enable formula. We're going to select the three dots next to formula. And we're going to select area. And we're going to say OK. We're going to modify the formula to read area over one square foot. And then we're going to put a backslash at the end. We're going to place the cursor at the end of the formula. And we're going to add a little bit more information here. It says that we want to. <coughs> We want to add that occupancy information that we had before. So I'm going to type in round down. And then we've got the parentheses area divided by one square foot divided by 0 0.3 and then close parentheses. Just make sure that that's OK and then say OK. All right, and then we're going to select the filter tab up here. And this is going to allow us to sort, or sort and filter some of our information. So on the filter tab, we're going to filter by number. And then we're going to say is greater than 9. And it all depends on what you're looking for with what you would put in here. This is just giving you an example of some things, information. And then we're going to go to the sorting and grouping tab. And we are going to sort by number. And we're going to enable grand totals at the bottom. And we want to select title and totals. And then for the type, we're going to select total capacity. Or I guess we're going to type it in. Oops. Capacity. Um, we're going to enable itemize every instance. And now we're going to press OK. So now a schedule was generated. And the schedule is for room occupancy. It appears as follows. It tells us the room number, the room name, the area of that room, and then how many people can fit in that room. And again, 454 would be way too many. But um, that's OK. We're just going to go with it for now. We're going to activate the ground floor. It doesn't mean we did anything wrong. It just means a factor that they're using is probably not quite right per code. Um, we're going to activate the ground floor plan. We are going to select um, the right side of the wing over here. So we're going to select this right side of this wing. Let's see if we can grab it. And we're going to select the move tool. And actually, what I'm going to do before I do that is I just want to deselect this part of the vestibule. So remember, if you hold down shift, you can deselect. You can even draw a window over to deselect. I just don't want those objects. Okay, I just want some of these rooms on the right hand side. Uh, it looks like it wants me to have the storage as well. So let's try to um, hit control to add plus and we'll try to add in those rooms as well. And we want to add, well, that looks about good. Okay, so now we want to say move, enable constrain, and we want to select the lower right corner as the base point, and then we want to pull this over 12 feet and hit enter. 
And the purpose of this is just to um, show you how the information is going to update. So if it says it can't create something, I'm just going to say delete. That's fine. And notice the door got a little bit weird. But it's fine in this instance just because it's just trying to show you how all of this stuff is updating. So know that the room tags updated that were affected updated. So like this room, the square footage got bigger and then the max occupancy count increased. So if you want to see it before, it was only, um, the meeting and training room was only 281 square feet with a max occupancy of 936. If I hit redo, now it's 512 and the max occupancy increases. That's the end of that exercise.